The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot accept, because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live and you will live. On that day you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Last weekend in, in, um, in Father JT's homilies, he talked a little bit about his formation experience. And he talked about the formation experience as, as the training we do as Jesuits become priests. And he talked about it, that it started day one. Day one, training began. And he was sent off to all these different places, he said. And he was sent to places that made him uncomfortable, places that were difficult and challenging. And he told us that he was sent to those places exactly for that reason. Because by being sent to those places, by having those experiences, he told us that his heart would be stretched. And in doing so, he'd be able to grow as a disciple. Now, hearing that, having gone through that same type of training, that same type of formation, I easily related to it. And when I think about it, one of the places that I was sent to that was challenging, that stretched my heart, that allowed me to grow, was our Jesuit infirmary in Los Gatos. This is where all Jesuits go once they've reached a certain age or because of some illness, they can no longer work, they can no longer minister. So they're sent there to Los Gatos and their main job, their mission is to pray for, for the church and to pray for the Society of Jesus. And because it's like the, it's the end of the road for them in a certain sense, it's, it's challenging for them. And because of that, it was challenging for me as well. It's really, though, for me, it was really a ministry of presence. And what that means was my main job, my main role there, was to just be with those Jesuits, to walk with them during these final days that they were, that they were walking on. And during that time, I actually really came to enjoy it. I met some wonderful Jesuits, and one that, that really sticks out of my mind, his name was Carlton. And we would spend time together, we would talk, and eventually, He'd start sharing with me all these stories about his life as a Jesuit. When he would work at a high school, or at a parish, or at a college, he would share with me all these stories. And these stories were so rich and so profound, in a sense. Because in each different instance, in every story, he would show me how God's hand was always at work within him, in the ordinary and in the extraordinary. Everything that he did was because of the grace of God, he said. But not only that, a lot of the stories that he told me were just really funny. Sometimes he would get into some embarrassing experiences or embarrassing situations, and it would just leave me laughing all the, uh, for the rest of the day, for the rest of that time that I was with him. And these stories, though, these stories were important, I thought. I loved listening to those stories, not just Carlton's, but stories of other Jesuits who would tell me their stories. And it was just wonderful. It was like hearing uh, our Jesuit family history, so to speak. Today, we continue on reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The Acts of the Apostles. And the Acts of the Apostles, we've been reading ever since Easter. So for the past five weeks, even during daily Mass, we've been re hearing from Acts of the Apostles. And Acts of the Apostles is really filled with stories similar to those stories that I heard in Los Gatos from guys like Carlton. There are stories of, of where they talk about Profound encounters of the men and women who are in Acts, profound encounters, their encounters with God, and how God worked within them while they were building up the church, while they were building up this community around them. And of course, we can see that in, in people like, like St. Paul, right? Through all of his missionary journeys, all those great things that he did, God's hand was always there with him. Also, though, Acts of the Apostles, they're filled with lots of funny stories also that we don't always hear on Sundays. For example, that same St. Paul in around chapter 20, 
he's giving a homily, and in that homily, it says the author of, of, of Acts says he's going on and on and on, and the whole community, they start to fall asleep. That's not, I don't see anybody falling asleep yet, so that's okay, that's good. But the whole community was falling asleep, and there's actually somebody up high on the railing, and the, and the young man falls asleep, and he falls flat on the floor in front of everybody. That hasn't happened to me yet, so I'm kind of, I'm thankful for that. But these stories, these stories in Acts of the Apostles, these are our stories. These are our stories. This is our family history, in a sense. And it's important that we hear these stories. It's important that we hear these stories because in a very real way, these are our ancestors. And they talk about all the wonderful things that they did to build up the church, to bring the faith to us 2,000 years later. And they, they tell us of this rich history that we have of our ancestors, of how God's hand was always right there with them. And again, in today's first reading, we hear about one of those ancestors, Philip. Philip. Who was Philip? Well, Philip was most likely a Jew in first century Palestine. You probably heard St. Peter or St. Paul preaching, and he converted. He came to believe, and he, he was baptized, and he was chosen to serve those who were in need. And then in today's reading, we hear that he was sent to Samaria to proclaim the good news. And he has tremendous success. He has tremendous success in proclaiming the good news to those people of Samaria. We hear that they came to believe that they were baptized and they were filled with joy. They were filled with joy. Well, what was it, though? What did Philip say to these people? Well, most likely, he was sharing his stories. He was sharing his profound experiences, his stories of, of encounter with God, and probably also those stories that were probably funny as well, these great stories that he had. And Philip wasn't this great character, right, in Acts of the Apostles. We don't hear much about him. He wasn't like St. Paul, who went all over the Mediterranean evangelizing. He wasn't like St. Stephen, who was the first martyr of the church. But Philip, he was made great because he shared his story. And by sharing his story, he brought joy to the people of Samaria, and he brought belief to the people of Samaria. And that's why it's important that we hear these stories from Acts of the Apostles. It was important for me, that's why I, why I heard those stories in Los Gatos, because they can be rich sources of joy for us, rich sources of belief for us. And not only is it important that we hear those stories, but it's also important that all of you tell your stories, because all of you have stories as well of profound encounter with God. And all those stories can be sources of belief and joy for all those out there in the world. Because all of us, we're just like Philip. All of us are just like Philip because by virtue of our baptism, all of us have been chosen to serve. And just like Philip was sent to Samaria to proclaim the good news, all of us are sent to proclaim the good news as well. And just as he probably shared his stories, all of you can share your stories as well. All of you have stories, and you can share those. We follow Philip. We follow Philip. 2,000 years ago, we follow him. We follow the men and women and actually the apostles. We follow the, the billions of men and women throughout the 2,000-year history of our church. And that church history is your story. You continue that story. Acts of the apostles doesn't finish. What we read today, that's the beginning of it, and it continues on with all of your stories. And by sharing your stories, you can bring joy and belief to all those who are in darkness. Today we continue on our preaching series entitled Step Up. And Step Up, this preaching series, has been all about ways that are things that we can do to become those disciples that God calls us to be. So for the past five weeks, we've been looking at five different things, and they've been service, ways that we can serve people to become those disciples we, we, God calls us to be, tithing, prayer and sacraments, engaging in small groups, and today, it's all about sharing your story. Sharing your stories, really. And I actually talked about this very same topic about uh, two, two months ago. Do you guys remember? I know you don't, so that's okay. 
But I'm going to, I'm going to double down on it. I want you guys, I challenge you guys, I invite you guys to begin to share your stories. Share your stories, because they can be such a rich source of belief and joy for so many people. And especially this weekend, as we begin to celebrate Mother's Day, I challenge you mothers to, ch to share those wonderful stories that you have that maybe your sons or daughters don't know about. Share those stories with them. And you sons and daughters, that could be a wonderful gift for you as well to share those stories that you have that maybe your parents don't, your mother doesn't know about and share it with them. And to take it one step further as well regarding the stories that we hold, the stories that we have, write those stories down. Write those stories down. When we think about it, we do so much to take care of our money, of our real estate, so that when we, when we leave this world, all that stuff is taken care of. Well, why don't we take the same care with the stories that we have? Because when we leave this place, our stories go with it. And those are rich sources. Those are important things that we can have, that we can use to evangelize. Write those stories down. Take some time this summer, maybe, and write some of those stories down. Write those stories down, share those stories, and in doing so, you can bring belief and joy to this world.